The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. Today, we're going to learn about field effect transistors, or FETs. There are two basic types of FETs, the junction field effect transistor, or JFET, and the metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor, or MOSFET. Previously, we learned about bipolar junction transistors, BJTs. They have a collector, emitter, and base. FETs, instead, have a source, drain, and gate. The source can be compared to the collector, the drain like the emitter, and the gate performs similarly to the base. While BJTs have a linear structure with two PN junctions and are either NPN or PNP, JFETs and MOSFETs have PN junctions configured in a way that gives them their unique characteristics and functions. Let's start by looking at JFETs. Here are two different visualizations commonly used to represent the inside of a JFET. Notice the different layout of the N-type and P-type regions. One type creates a channel directly connecting the source and drain, while the other type sort of surrounds it and connects to the gate. JFETs are named for which type makes up the channel, P-channel JFETs and N-channel JFETs. The current flowing through the channel can be controlled by varying the voltage at the gate. We'll start with an N-channel JFET. We know from our diodes lesson that connecting a PN junction in reverse bias will cause its depletion region to grow. The depletion region acts as an insulator, restricting the flow of current. By increasing or decreasing the depletion zone at the PN junctions, we can control the flow of current through the channel. As you can see, the source and drain are connected by a single region. When a voltage is applied across them, current flows freely between them as if the two leads were shorted together. The JFET is essentially on by default. Now, if we apply a second voltage across the gate and source terminals, but in reverse bias, a depletion layer will form where the P-type and N-type regions meet. In an N-channel JFET, this requires the gate source voltage to be less than the drain source voltage. The more biased the gate becomes, the more the depletion region grows, the narrower the channel becomes, constricting the flow of current through the channel. The channel can continue to narrow until the current is cut off completely. The voltage difference at this point is known as the cutoff voltage. To increase the bias, the gate source voltage has to be lower than the drain source voltage. To do this, you can either increase the drain source voltage or decrease the gate source voltage. The depletion region grows or shrinks relative to the difference between the voltages. The higher the difference in voltage, the more the depletion region grows, the more current is restricted or decreased. The less the difference in voltage, the smaller the depletion region is, the more current flows, it increases. N-channel JFETs are used far more commonly than P-channel JFETs, but they effectively work the same way, simply with a reversed polarity. In a P-channel JFET, the gate would be connected to positive rather than negative. This also means that the gate source voltage has to be higher relative to the drain source voltage rather than lower. Okay, we know that the gate has to be reverse bias for the JFET to function, but what happens if we forward bias the gate? Well, sadly, the gate junction is not really designed to handle any significant amount of current. And if current were to flow through the gate in forward bias, it would probably destroy the component. JFETs are known as depletion mode devices since they rely on the growing and shrinking of the depletion zone. But that's not the only way a FET can function. While JFETs are strictly depletion mode devices, MOSFETs can be either depletion mode or enhancement mode devices. The main difference is in their construction. Depletion mode, or DMOSFETs, have a physical channel connecting the source and the drain terminals. In enhancement mode, or EMOSFETs, the source and drain are not connected and rely on the gate voltage to form a channel between them. JFETs are junction field effect transistors using their PN junctions to affect the fields within the device. MOSFETs have a metal oxide semiconductor. The name comes from the metal conductor of the gate, which connects to a silicon dioxide insulating layer that is between the gate terminal and the semiconductor that makes up the substrate in the rest of the component. The foundation of the MOSFET is called the substrate. N-channel MOSFETs have a P-material substrate, 
P-channel MOSFETs have an end material substrate. The MOS acts like a capacitor. Due to the insulating oxide layer, the conductive layers don't touch, and therefore, current can't flow between the gate and the rest of the FET. But if the metal conductor at the gate becomes charged, it will cause an equal and opposite charge in the semiconductor substrate, just like in a capacitor. Let's look at an N-channel D-MOSFET. Like in a J-FET, the drain and source are connected by a channel. No connection or voltage at the gate is required for current to flow between the source and drain. The MOSFET, by default, is effectively on. When there is a voltage at the gate, and the gate is reverse bias, the D MOSFET is operating in depletion mode. It behaves like a JFET. As the bias at the gate grows stronger, the depletion zone also grows. Proportionally, the channel is narrowed, increasing the resistance and restricting the flow of current through the channel between the source and drain. Now here's where the D MOSFET is different, when it operates in enhancement mode. The gate is connected to a voltage in forward bias. Polarity at the gate draws charge carriers from the substrate towards the channel, effectively widening the channel. The channel grows beyond its default size. This allows more current to flow through the channel than is usually possible. So D MOSFETs can work with zero bias, reverse bias, or forward bias at the gate. MOSFETs conduct only in enhancement mode. In depletion mode, the reverse bias of the gate narrows the channel, restricting flow. As you can see, there is no channel between the source and drain, so there's nothing that can be narrowed. For current to flow between the source and drain, the MOSFET has to be in enhancement mode in order to create a channel. For the gate of this N-channel E-MOSFET to be connected in forward bias, the gate is connected to positive power. The positive gate voltage attracts negative charge carriers joining the n-type regions of the source and drain, creating a channel between them. The more voltage applied at the gate, the wider the channel gets. If the voltage is lowered back down, the channel will narrow. The minimum amount of voltage required at the gate to create a channel is called the threshold voltage. To summarize, we have JFETs that only work in depletion mode. They are always on unless acted upon by a voltage at the gate, which can decrease the flow of current through its channel. E-MOSFETs only work in enhancement mode. They are by default off, requiring a voltage at the gate to create a channel between the source and drain. And D-MOSFETs that can work in depletion or enhancement mode. Like JFETs, they are also on by default, but a voltage at the gate can cause it to decrease or increase the current flowing through its channel. There's a lot more information to learn to be able to use FETs effectively in a circuit. Lots of voltage and current math. But hopefully with an understanding of how each FET works, you've got a leg up on learning that next step. If you have any information you'd like to add to today's lesson, or questions you'd like to ask, please post those on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning!